Hello, friends. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all of you. Welcome to an informative webinar by JK Technosoft. Our topic for today is progress legacy modernization, an issue we are certain is very close to your heart. I'm your host, Arun Sikri, and with me I have my two colleagues, Mr. Rajinder Kambra is the Senior VP and Head of Progress Delivery within our organization, and Mr. Prabhu Jha is our Progress Technical Architect. In this session, we will focus on our problems, on the problems that you must be facing with your Progress Legacy applications. We will also talk about some of the issues that you might be facing and the solutions that we can offer to help you modernize these applications. We will also discuss some of the benefits and risks involved in deploying these applications. Before we begin, let us go through some housekeeping items. All of our attendees will be on mute. Please use your chat window for any questions, and we will attend to those questions towards the end of the webinar. I will now hand it over to Mr. Kamra. Thank you very much, Arun, and hello, everyone. My name is Rajinder Kamra. I have been associated with Progress Technology for the past 22 years. During this long association, I had interacted with organizations, customers, developers, architects, contractors, and many colleagues. I must say that organization had been very happy to use Progress because of the many advantages it provided compared to the competition. However, during the past five years or so, there had been a storm of technological advancement. This includes high-speed web, mobile, social media, and cloud. On top of this technological advancement, your customers, dealers, partners, and vendors have been more demanding from your business. For example, five to 10 years back, you were all right to have an order system which allowed you to add, delete, or modify an order. But this is not sufficient today because your partners, dealers, distributors, and customers need the ability to add, modify the order directly into your system to speed up the order entry and ensure accuracy. Now, this can be achieved only by having an open architecture and publishing the web services to be consumed by your partners, dealers, distributors, and customers. And this whole exercise can be done, the whole things can be achieved by using modernization. Coming to the various drivers for modernization of the legacy progress application, high cost of maintenance and enhancement is because of the closed architecture. And you need to do and redo many things to meet your customer demands. Running your application on unsupported progress version, which is below 9.1e of progress, is like sitting on a ticking time bomb. When your application on such version is down due to any reason, you are unlikely to get support from progress software corporation. This is a major risk for your business continuity. Any new enhancement module you want to deliver will take longer time because of the close architecture of your application as explained earlier. And, and all these things will hinder the web development and integration with the different applications of your choice. Limited hardware options. If you plan to move to the cloud in future, which you should be doing, certain proprietary hardware and software are not supported. For example, Amazon will not support any Unix flavors. For example, HP Unix or AIX, although Linux is supported. Based on the several Gartner studies and surveys, organizations are spending 70 to 80% of IT budget in maintenance. In fact, this figure looks very optimistic to me, and the actual spend on the maintenance could be still higher. What it means, that very limited budget is available 
for the innovation and new business demands. The new critical business demands are piling up while budget is consumed in maintaining the business current IT, current IT infrastructure support. This cycle can be broken using modernization. You can start by, let's say, allocating 20% of your budget to modernization and make a beginning. Years after years, your maintenance budget will decrease as you modernize piece by piece, and hence you can allocate more budget to the modernization projects. What we have seen in several cases which we have worked with customers and the parties, that if you follow this approach in three to four years, you can fully modernize your application. Uh, coming to the complete uh, paradigm of modernization, before doing the modernization, your application is monolithic. It's client server based. When I say client server based means it is not open to any third party, your customers, partners, vendors. You have got green screens, they are sequential. It could be even graphical screen and sequential. So what I mean by sequential is that in case you want to modify the customer limit in a, in a customer screen, then you may have to pass through several screens sequentially to come to a screen where customer limit is available and you modify it. And again, this is a time-taking thing, and users are not having good experience of this. Your application could be non-scalable. What it means is your old applications are not having the facility of load balancing, and they are not as server enabled. And in case your users are increased, so your performance will hit very severely and does not meet business demand. Obviously, the business demands are changing. There are new customers, new vendors, new partners. They are coming, and they are very, very demanding. And uh, to meet those demands, you have to embark on the modernization journey. So once you embark on the modernization journey and you start doing the modernization, after modernization, what you should achieve, what you should look for, you should be looking for an application which is web-enabled, so that your users are comfortable in accessing your application from anywhere. It should be mobile enabled. What it means is pieces of your application which can be ported to mobile, they can be accessed through mobile as well. It should have a distributed architecture which allows you to do the load balancing and it makes your application as scalable. It should be event driven. What it means is that if you have to make a change in the customer limit, you just click on a customer limit tab and immediately you can change the customer limit of a customer and then meet business need. Obviously, the new architecture which is open and which allows you to publish the web services will be able to address the new business needs that you have. So in case you are planning and in case, in case you are starting to embark on the modernization journey, what we recommend is that you consider the business factor first and then consider the technical factors. So what it means the business factors should be driving the technology and not the technology driving the business. So when we look into the business factors, so you should look at the, your business objective. What are your objectives? What are your business continuity requirements? Because when you are going for the modernization, then obviously you are having a legacy application and a new modernization, modernized application, so they have to work together. And cost and time, you have to look at what is the budget available and how much time you have got to do the modernization. And what are the business process change you are looking for in currently and near future? So once you decide all those things, once you have all those things in place, then all these factors will drive you to the technology, what technology aspect you use. In my opinion and in our opinion, we have got four choices for you to take one of them from the technology perspective. And I will request Mr. Prabhuja to come forward and describe those four technical technology options with you, which you can take for your modernization project. Prabhu, please stop. Thank you, Rajinder. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, as Rajinder has just uh, discussed that uh, various technology options, so we are going to get a little detail on those options. Uh, as as Rajinder has said, we have four broad technological options. Uh, any other option uh, which may exist uh, out of these four options, in our opinion, should be fitting in either of these four options. Uh, number one is the platform upgrade. Uh, number two is the technology migration. And number three is the cloud migration, which can happen in combination with other migrations. And uh, APS migration. 
uh, let's discuss the technology uh, platform migration first, platform upgrade first. Uh, when we talk about the platform upgrade, uh, we are talking in terms of you are on uh, one of those legacy versions which is not supported by the progress. And uh, <clears throat> whether it's a version 9 and below, whether it's uh, in one of those versions in version 10, which is not supported by the progress anymore. So we highly recommend you to migrate to an upgraded version which is supported by the progress because like Rinder has said, you might be sitting on a ticking time bomb. Uh, whatever uh, your current situation, uh, it is not going to be uh, helpful to stay on that uh, legacy uh, version you are in and uh, you should seriously consider uh, upgrading to uh, the supported version. Uh, once you migrate to one of the supported version and especially if you are migrating to version 11, and above, uh, let's say version 11.3 or 4, uh, you will get uh, all the mobility options, all the you know web enablement options, hooking your reportings to a third-party system or your analytics, uh, your application to the analytics. Uh, future updates will be easier. Uh, suppose you are uh, in whatever version you are, you upgrade to a supported version, your future update will be easier. This is one time exercise you need to do, and your future update will be quite easier after that. Uh, I, don't know, I don't know how many of you have explored, like, but Progress Open Edge 11.4 uh, comes with the features such as stable partitioning. And uh, as you, you might have noticed uh, over the period of time, uh, Progress has kind of addressed all the technical wish list which a person can have in the Open Edge. And uh, I mean, not naming, I'm not naming here the business rule engine or the business processing management uh, engine or any other thing at this point. It just, I'm just talking the plain Open Edge. Uh, second option we have under this uh, modernization is the technology migration. Uh, under the technology migration, we have uh, two broad things uh, which we can consider. Uh, one is uh, migrating to uh, uh, .NET and Java. Uh, either it's a partial migration or it's a full migration. Uh, when we talk about the partial migration, it is basically migrating to uh, only the UI part of it or only the certain business data source part of it. A full migration is that you have kind of developing the entire application into uh, different stack altogether. Uh, this is not something new. I mean, I don't know how many of uh, you are aware, but it's, it's, it's something which has been around from version 8. Uh, if, you, if, you, if you have uh, used the proxy generator tool from the progress is around from version 8, uh, you can uh, develop the Java classes. Uh, your procedure, procedures can be uh, have the signature in the Java classes. You can, have, you can develop the DLL uh, from the procedures. And uh, using the proxy generator, you can consume those DLLs in Java classes in the different UIs through the JSP or whatever HTML uh, UI you want to use. And there's a proven framework for that, and uh, we have uh, migrated various customers in that uh, particular uh, uh, road of the migration, and <clears throat> it really helped them uh, in you know, modernizing their application. Uh, on top of that, uh, you know, once you choose this option, I mean, you can consider adding app server for your better load balancing of your application. Uh, data server for hooking to other data sources or data direct you can hook uh, on the cloud based uh, uh, data source for uh, other data sources and uh, your application in this route I mean it can have a better enterprise application that can connect seamlessly to uh, other enterprise application of your uh, of your organization and uh, synchronous and real time connection to the other applications it doesn't have to be going through the batch process of uh, loading and uh, loading the data. Uh, other option under the technology migration is uh, the course implementation. Uh, it's a commercial of the self. Uh, name comes in our uh, in our mind is SAP, uh, Oracle Business Suites, uh, Microsoft Dynamics CRM, or Salesforce CRM. Uh, there can be many others. So uh, these are the main. Uh, SAP and Oracle ERP has many already uh, you know proven templates, uh, enablers, and accelerators for a faster implementation cycle. And uh, if you decide to take this route, uh, your application will be future-proof, and it will be on a non-bespoke solution, so you don't have to uh, maintain your application anymore. And implementation, implementation cycle could be carefully considered for a non-disruptive uh, migration, so uh, that has to be uh, taken place in that consideration. Uh, third option is uh, the cloud migration. Uh, under that, uh, uh, I, would, I, would, I would specifically like to mention the Pacific Arcade Cloud, which is from the from the Progress. Uh, Progress provides this ready licensing option, which can be scaled and scaled up and scaled down based on a peak and value situation of your application demand. 
and uh, <clears throat> Arcade comes with the environment of a demo development, deployment, and showroom environment. So you really don't have to manage a lot of environments here. You have everything ready there. Uh, putting a putting a system, putting your application on this uh, cloud is, is quite uh, you know easy, to, and it's it's, uh, it's going to be done in a very less time. Uh, if you don't want you to go to the arcade route, you can go to our uh, typical uh, you know cloud provider like Amazon or Azure or Rackspace or any third party cloud providers. Uh, cloud enablement with the version upgrade is is can give you the maximum benefit, and we will highly recommend you to take this route. Uh, let me tell you that running an on-premise or self-managed data center is not a business you want to be in. I mean, this is, this is left, left, best left to the to the to the to the organizations or to the to the providers who are best in that. So uh, Amazon's are best in that. Azure's are best in that. So let them handle that part. Uh, you should uh, do the cloud fit analysis of your application and uh, and consider uh, doing the cloud migration. This can add. A significant uh, modernization of steps in your in your current IT maintenance uh, scenario. Uh, fourth one I would like to discuss is uh, a pass migration. Uh, a pass adoption is a complete paradigm shift from the traditional application development and deployment strategy. Uh, Role-based platform from the umbrella of progress specific is a newer entrant in the a pass arena. It's a very high productivity tool. Uh, you can develop the application quickly in it. Uh, it has a lot of templates available in there. With minimal or no coding, uh, you can develop your system uh, in, in the APS. And uh, there is another, uh, another tool from Progress is uh, Node.js on the modulus. Uh, it, is, it is a high a control tool. I mean, you can develop everything in the JavaScript in it, and you can control every aspect of your uh, new application in that. Uh, so uh, these are the two uh, APS. Uh, tools available from the umbrella of the progress. Uh, <clears throat> other than that, I mean, I don't know if uh, you have uh, this A pass is not something new, but progress has came with the role pass, role based uh, lately. But uh, force.com from the house of Salesforce was there from around for some time in the A pass. So you can you can choose based on your uh, modernization strategy. Uh, we are going to discuss certain case studies uh, in the in the context of the modernization uh, routes we have discussed so far. Uh, the first one I would like to discuss here is uh, for the legacy version upgrade from uh, the older or non-supported version of the progress to the version uh, which is a supported one. Uh, this is for one of our customers. He's a major ISP in the logistics. A uh, user of their logistic applications are client like FedEx. Uh, major business issues with the Customer was the real-time shipment tracking, and uh, this was causing a lot of business customer dissatisfaction. Uh, it was it was it was uh, one of the business requirement. It was one of you know the business objective to uh, attain that customer uh, dissatisfaction to a uh, to a different level. And uh, partner and vendors were not able to interact with the application due to the closed architecture. Um, there was various uh, data they wanted to <coughs> interchange. So an application performance was also one of the issue. Uh, the application was on the progress version 7, and we have updated, uh, first thing we did is we updated the progress to the version 10.2b, version and then eventually to version 11.3. Uh, we re-architected the three-tier uh, system to the three-tier, uh, from the character UI uh, green screen to the graphical user interface. Uh, we uh, we have added the app server for the better load balancing and improving the performance of the application. And user, user interface was separated from the business logic so that a business logic can be properly reused from the situation like web services or uh, callable functions. And uh, web services were deployed and have been consumed by uh, their partners and the application itself consumed the web services. And uh, by, by doing all these uh, steps and providing this modernization, uh, customer was able to have a lower maintenance cost, have a high productivity, and had a scalable system. And uh, the application was uh, scalable. Now the new client addition will be with a minimal effort, and uh, all these objectives of the modernization, modernization has been achieved. Uh, this next case I would like to discuss uh, in, uh, in the context of technology migration. Uh, this is one of our uh, largest uh, secondary oil distribution company in North America. Uh, main objective of this modernization was to have, to have a responsive, scalable, and reliable integration. And response time was the key because the customer is in the fueling business. So uh, you can understand the changing cost. 
uh, customer had a very complex application architecture. They had 39 integration points. And data was loaded into the ERP system using batch routing. And because of the load time error, uh, many data was not getting loaded. That resulted in not fulfillment of the other. And has the loss of revenue and the customer dissatisfaction. So uh, these are the major objectives which we needed to address under this. Uh, initial challenge we face on to get all the moving parts to work together. Uh, because customer has a big technology stack they have, uh, they were using uh, all the components of Microsoft like this draw, uh, SharePoint and, uh, and uh, the reporting tools, uh, BI tools. So uh, we have to make sure that all the moving parts work together. Uh, so we are dealing with the multiple technology stack. Uh, we started with the real-time replication in the Microsoft SQL Server database. Uh, we hooked up uh, the BI system of the Microsoft, Microsoft with the replicated database. Then uh, we in implemented the Microsoft BizTalk integration services for automating those uh, 39 integration points, which, which, was, which was the cause of the pain for dropping the data and the loss of revenue. And we implemented the solutions such as electronic bill of landing, configurable rule engine to address the daily changing price, automatic order management as such. Uh, we started with the master data management uh, migration and uh, by bits and bits, by modules and modules. 80% uh, of the application has been migrated to Microsoft.net now. 20% uh, of the application still exists in the progress and uh, both the application are beautifully coexisting today. Uh, with the modernized system, customer has improved productivity. They have a faster response time. Customer satisfaction has been improved and that, that revenue loss uh, has been plugged now. So uh, it's increased in the revenue. Uh, next case, I would like to discuss uh, another migration under the technology for the quartz product, commercial or the self. Uh, this is for one of the big FMCG house uh, in India. Actually, it's a global company. Uh, this uh, FMCG house was using SAP globally, except in the Indian subcontinent. So uh, because of that, there was a integration issues. Uh, data was not able to be uh, to be available in a, in a more uh, you know transparent manner to the different systems. So uh, there was a strategic decision to move to SAP from the QAD. So uh, we took the challenge. Uh, the challenge was preparing an as is process document because there was a heavily customized QAD system covering. So we uh, prepared an as is process document covering the operations across the multiple line of business. And then we validated the blueprint document and got the sign up from the various business stakeholders. And then we prepared the migration procedure toolkit covering all the business functions. And we carried out the data migration. Then we have carried out all the process migration and the user migration finally from the QAD to SAP. Uh, we have in the process, we have provided end user training and uh, go live support uh, covering the large user to spread across the geography. Uh, the other challenge was to keep the customization to minimum because uh, we don't want it to bring all the QAD customization to the SAP, otherwise cost is going to be astronomical. So we had to control that part as well. And uh, we were successful in doing that. And uh, finally, we were able to roll out uh, the SAP system to 4,000 partner outlet, and almost 25,000 users was covered under that rollout. Uh, next, I would like to uh, cover uh, quickly on the cloud enablement. Uh, like, like I've discussed in the beginning, if you have uh, not considered that uh, that move yet for your for your uh, application, you should consider it. You should consider it for your environment. You should do a cloud fit analysis. It is not only infrastructure move. Like I said, it is running an on-premise or self-managed data center is not easy and it's not cost-effective. Uh, there is a study from the Gartner that suggests that if you move to the proper, uh, if you choose the proper cloud solution and move to the cloud it can add almost 40% reduction to your IT support and maintenance. You don't need to invest upfront for the usage of five years down the line. You don't need to log that money. You can go to the cloud and then you can scale and down based on your uh, usage, based on your demand. And uh, you know, like, like I have discussed in the beginning, Arcade has a pre-installed provisive stack helping the faster deployment of applications. Uh, you can compare it with uh, Amazon and then you can you can do the cloud feed analysis. You can choose the vendor, uh, the cloud model, which best suits your organization. You can choose the pricing and the platform accordingly. And then you can plan and test and move things to the cloud accordingly. Uh, last, I would like to discuss a case study for uh, role-based. 
uh, like we have discussed in the beginning, uh, APAS is is a is a new entrant in the in the arena of uh, sorry, role is a new entrant in the arena of APAS. Uh, Force.com was one of the uh, older player in this, and from the House of Salesforce. Uh, challenges in selecting an APAS platform is there are not many around. So it's a challenge in selecting an appropriate APAS platform. Uh, zeroing is on a cost-effective architecture, and uh, is important because you need you may need to redevelop some of the legacy business logic if you are moving if you are planning to move to a APAS platform. You may need to do some reengineering every as well for uh, for your application, and uh, based on the complexity of your application's front end and back end. It will decide that how many, how much you may need to re-engineer. Uh, in our case, uh, we have we are migrating our uh, flagship product hospital management system in IKRIS onto the role base. Uh, we have done the migration 25% in the eight-week time with a five-person team. Uh, it's a very minimal coding effort uh, for the UI, almost no coding effort for the business logic. Uh, we are using data directs for uh, for the sourcing of the data from the different sources and. Uh, like I have uh, said in the beginning, uh, role base is a high productivity tool, uh, and uh, Node.js is another tool which you can consider if you wanted to have a high control tool uh, instead of a high productivity one. I would quickly like to uh, discuss the benefit and risk of uh, various options which we have discussed so far. Uh, if you talk about uh, the legacy version of Crate, uh, cost-wise, it is going to be the least. Uh, you can, you will, you are going to. You are not going to spend much if, if you are planning to, if you have not done that. So we'll highly recommend that. Uh, benefits you will get in between. Uh, you will get some benefits. You will not, it, it won't be as good as going to a, a SAP or, or a Java or a Knife.net, but you will get the maximum modernization benefit in it if you have not upgraded to the recent version. A risk is going to be less because uh, you are mostly going doing a technology migration. So even if you upgrade your platform, even if you are on a platform, uh, operating system platform or the hardware platform which is which is older, it is still going to be least riskier options compared to any other option. Basically, you are de-risking your current application uh, when you take this step. So uh, we will highly recommend to take this uh, route if you have not uh, considered any other route so far. Uh, technology migration will be a bit expensive than the version upgrade. Uh, it's, it's based on a level of migration you wanted to do it, level of modernization you wanted to do it under that. If you are only are doing it for the user interface, then it is not going to be that much costly. If you are doing a, a part migration of the end user interface and the back end, then it is going to be a bit expensive than that. And the uh, benefit is obviously going to be many. If you plan to uh, hook the data sources to or replicate the data to other sources, you can hook a lot of native uh, analytics or uh, reporting or the business intelligence uh, to, the, to the data sources. Risk is not going to be much here because this, uh, the, this is a proven framework there, there's a proven methodology over here which can uh, provide you the necessary uh, you know, risk uh, mediation here. And uh, here also you are pretty much de-risking uh, your application by taking this modernization route. Uh, third one is uh, commercial of the self-migration. Uh, this is going to be most expensive one because uh, it has involves a lot of moving parts. You will have to figure out the licensing, you will have to figure out all the implementation, uh, all the rollout plan, all the business mapping, all the blueprinting of the implementation. So a uh, lot of uh, things involved in here. So it is going to be expensive one. Uh, benefits is going to be manifold. Uh, you are not, uh, you will be uh, moving out from the bespoke system to a, to a, to a you know, system which is which is a package solution and you don't have to update your beast to bespoke system anymore. A risk is going to be a little higher here because if you have not planned your implementation properly, if you start bringing all your bespoke customization into this uh, course, then it is the cost is going to be astronomical. Your implementation cycle can stretch for on and on. So uh, you have to be carefully manage that risk. Uh, cloud uh, modernization is definitely one of the a cost, most cost effective option. It can give you the maximum benefit and risk is, is, is least here because there is a proven uh, framework for doing this. So uh, we certainly recommend you to take this route. Uh, for your modernization services, uh, we are well geared. I mean, we have, uh, you know, we have <coughs> executive, we are here to make your modern modernization journey a success. 
we are well placed to do so as we have a system integrator of progress. We also have a gold level partnership with Microsoft and Oracle to give you best in cutting edge technology. Our collaboration with Amazon and Salesforce to enable you to provide you best of the cloud services. Uh, if and when you decide to embark on the journey of modernization, we want it to be your trusted partner. We will be assisting and providing you the unbiased advice, which will not be tied up to any particular technology or solution. Our assessment and advice will be entirely to address your business objective and success of your business. We have been servicing and supporting the customer in progress technology for the last 20 years. We have delivered hundreds of hundreds of modernization projects and created migration frameworks which are time tested. Uh, we have a team of progress professionals with expertise in the character user interface, graphical user interface, dynamics, ADM, web speed, a proxy generator, pro data set, you name any flavor of the progress technology and we have the expertise. Uh, we have professional with in-depth knowledge and experience in the Microsoft, Oracle, Java, SAP, and IBM technologies. And these specialists can deliver the solution that can deal with any level of technical and business complexity. So uh, you please choose your modernization strategy based on your organization risk appetite and uh, where you wanted to move forward on that. I would like to uh, hand over to uh, Arun from here to uh, take it to the next. Thank you, Prabhu. Uh, that was very informative. Uh, we will now take uh, some questions and uh, for those of you who could not, uh, who missed the introduction session, you can still use the chat window to post your questions and we'll take them up. So we have uh, this question here uh, from one of the gentlemen. What technical options we have to web enable and mobile enable in version 11 of progress? Uh, we have, we have a very good options in that. It's a very good question. And uh, we have very good options. We have in Open Edge, we have a, a mobile development studio in version 11 and onward, where you can develop a mobile, mobile uh, application and you can deploy it. Uh, it's developed once and deploy anywhere a party game of progress where uh, you can uh, deploy your applications. Uh, it's, it's not BlackBerry supported, but it is well supported under the iOS and it is well supported uh, for uh, Android. You can do that for the mobile and for the web. Uh, we, if you choose Open Client, then you can hook your uh, application to uh, one of those uh, uh, Microsoft.NET or Java-based or, or HTML-based uh, client, or you can choose go to the web speed route, which is a very time-tested tool from the progress. Uh, it can give you that web and mobile and availability as well. Sure, thank you, Prabhu. We have another question. Do we have Hadoop-like implementation in progress open edge when moving to pass or big data? Uh, when we talk about Hadoop, uh, I, would, I would like to clear here that uh, the big data is, is, uh, is just a supplement. Big data is not going to replace the RDBMS. Big data is to, uh, is to, filter, your, uh, is to filter your heap of data and then get the useful data out of it to your RDBMS. And yes, Progress has come up with, a, with a, on the modulus platform, Progress has come up with the MongoDB, which is one of the big data solutions. And uh, you can use Node.js along with that, which can provide you that very much implementation, very, very, very much capability, which uh, Hadoop is providing with, the, with its uh, map reduce functionality, that is what you're looking for in the big data. Sure, thank you, Prabhu. Another question, how much time will it typically take for version and platform upgrade of a progress application? Okay, I'll take this and it's a good question. Well, basically the time requirement will depend upon from which version to which version you are migrating. For example, if you're already on version 10 and you're, you want to move to version 11, it may take let's say one week or two weeks, but if you're at version eight, and you want to move to version 11, then it may take longer because the, we don't have a ready-made utility from progress to move the databases from a, a version 8 to version 11. From one version, we can do it very quickly. But yes, overall, whatever version you are in and whatever version you want to go in, I don't think it is going to take several months. 
it will just take several weeks. Sure. Another question. For integration with partners, we currently use EDI. After modernization, will EDI be still used? Okay, I'll take this question. I think it's a very good question. The EDI is a very old technology and it is still prevalent. And in fact, it is a lifeline of the organization to interact with their partners. But the only limitation with EDI is that you need a service provider like uh, ATOS Origin or some other Gentron kind of service provider. And these small customers will not have access to that kind of facility. So EDI can coexist. There is no doubt about it in the modernization paradigm. But you may want to remove EDI altogether because whatever is required by EDI, this can be achieved by using the modernization object. This can be achieved by modernization of the project. And then it can save the cost as well because you have to pay money to the EDI service provider. Right, right, right. Okay, uh, we have another question from a gentleman. In cases where the functionality is more inclined towards business rules management uh, in a legacy progress application, what modernization options would you consider? How would you tackle it? Yeah, uh, it's a very good question. I would uh, take that. Uh, I don't know if you have evaluated the Corticon product from the progress, but this is uh, one of the very good rule management engine. And uh, if your particular situation is, 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 if your application has a situation where you have a complex and very frequently changing rules, we would highly recommend you to separate your rules from the transaction processing system. Because uh, in that case, you will not have to uh, go to your application again and again and manage those rules. You can, you can configure your rules and you can manage those rules in a spreadsheet-like uh, environment in the, in the Corticon. And it can be changed in a, you know, in a, in a fraction of, uh, of uh, you know, time when you want it to compared to you know, making the same change in a transition processing system. So uh, yes, uh, Corticon is a very well-placed tool, for, tool that can be hooked with any of system, whether it's a progress or non-progress based system. Yeah, basically, Corticon should be considered very seriously in the journey of modernization if somebody is embarking. Because when you are doing the modernization, then really you are doing the re-architecting of your application. And you, you can very easily fit in the Corticon product in that time. OK. Thank you. Uh, there's another question. How do you compare the other APAS platforms with role-based APAS platforms? Uh, honestly speaking, uh, this question is, uh, is is going to really raise raise a point that how many APAS platforms are out there, and uh, there are not many. So, uh, and uh, we have not done any specific benchmarking uh, compared to uh, the very known platform Force.com. Uh, but I can tell you, based on our experience and based on our uh, work which we have done with the role-based role-based APAS, and we have evaluated the Force.com as well. Our role base is really well placed. It's a very strong tool. It's a very good productivity tool. Yes, uh, it doesn't have that many templates like the force.com has, but it's a very good tool and it is going to evolve and it is going to be a very strong contender in that arena. All right. Okay. Thank you, Prabhu. So uh, we don't seem to be having any more questions. Uh, finally, we would take a short poll uh, before we end this webinar. I would like to thank all of you for joining us today in this session, and I hope that this discussion was a learning experience for all of you and will help you in successfully, grab, uh, in successfully handling your legacy modernization challenges. Please do take a moment to fill up the survey, the poll that comes on your screen now. Thank you very much, and bye-bye.